Drones, 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 drones. What is going on everybody? Dan with Gear Focus here and today we're going to be talking about drones. In particular, the DJI Mavic Pro 2. All right guys, so like I said in that intro, we are gonna be talking about the DJI Mavic Pro 2. Now this is not a new drone by any stretch of the imagination, but it is probably the best consumer drone that DJI has ever put out. This drone has the same sensor as the Phantom 4, which I actually have right here, well, I did have right here before it decided to just fall out of the sky one day, but it does have the same sensor that was in that drone and that is packed into a nice tiny little form factor. Now after this guy fell out of the sky on a shoot one day, I knew that I needed to replace my drone, but I wanted to get something that was smaller because at the time I was traveling a lot. So I wanted something that I could easily pack and take with me wherever I was going. And that's how I ended up on the Mavic line. I do also have the original Mavic Air, but I don't really like using that on professional shoots. Now the Mavic Air is great for traveling or if you wanna do some like really silly stuff like fly through gaps or fly through trees that you probably really shouldn't be flying through. But the Mavic Pro 2 is really a professional level drone. Now over the course of time, I have changed the settings in the Mavic Pro 2 to very specific settings that help me get really great image quality every single time. One of the biggest suggestions that I can make if you are flying any DJI drone is to shoot in 30 frames per second. The reason I say that is because the DJI Kodak does not write fast enough when you are shooting at 24 frames and you end up getting some stuttering in your image, especially when the drone is moving quickly. When you shoot at 30 frames per second, it tricks the camera into shooting a little bit faster and you get less of that stuttering effect. So now that you have your frame rate set up, the next thing is your aperture. Typically, I like to leave it at f4. It does go all the way down to f2.8, but I personally don't think that that's the sharpest. I think f4 is the sharpest on this camera. It also allows you to get more light into the sensor if you are flying in a low light situation. Now, I do wanna take this time to say that if you are flying your drone, make sure you are following all of the rules and regulations that are in place in your area. I've been seeing a lot of people do some really stupid stuff with drones and all that does is hurt everybody else who is flying drones following the rules. So don't be stupid about it, follow the rules, and if you're flying for business or furtherance of business, you need to get your Part 107 if you are in the United States of America. Now another thing that's pretty standard across DJI drones is their ISO. The ISO boosting on the DJI drones is really kind of bad, so you want to stay down at the lowest end of that range. So you want to make sure that you are shooting at ISO 100, maybe 2 or maybe 400 if you need to go up that high, but you want to keep that ISO down as much as you can to avoid getting any noise in your image. Now if after you take your ISO all the way down, you still need to cut more light, go ahead and throw an ND filter on the front of that camera. I personally like to use the moment filters. So I fly this drone mostly for freelance content. I'm not really shooting any high motion content or anything like that. Most of my stuff needs to be nice, slow, and cinematic. So for that, I have very specific settings for both my gimbal and my pitch speed and that kind of stuff. So for me personally, I like to set my pitch speed to 10 and I like to set my smoothness to 15. And then from there, I make sure that any movement I make with the sticks is very slight and very slow. Now, if I need to slow it down any more than that, I'll go ahead and throw the drone into tripod mode, which slows the entire drone's movements down and makes it nice and slow and easy. Now, one more thing that I personally think is the strongest point of this drone is it does shoot 10-bit color. Most of the other drones only shoot 8-bit and 10-bit gives you much more color flexibility in post. The 10-bit color space allows for a better quality color grade, which can make it look more professional, which again makes the DJI Mavic Pro 2 a much more professional drone. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it for me today. Thank you for sticking around to the end of this video. This was a nice, short, quick one. I just wanted to give you my personal favorite settings for the Mavic Pro 2. If you guys wanna see any more drone content, let me know down in the comments down below. Personally, I really, really like drones. I fly them all the time. I fly FPV as well. So if you guys wanna see content on that, let me know down in those comments down below. And while you're down there, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. That kind of stuff does really help us out here on the channel. I'm trying to make this channel the best that it can possibly be for you guys so that we can give you the best content moving forward. 
All right, so that's gonna do it for me today. Thank you for sticking around to the end. Stay safe, stay healthy, and remember that your focus is always here to help you feed your passion.